Hello, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a simple throw ball game. This can be useful for um, throwing, knocking down cans, or uh, something like a Pokemon Go, or maybe even a bowling game. So let's dive right into it right now. I have a pre setup scene, and you haven't missed anything. Simply just a small little wall I've made here with cubes. They all have rigid bodies on them. And then I've just simply designed this sphere as a ball. Um, nothing fancy on it and then a ball thrower so the way that we're going to be doing this is i'm simply just going to move the ball thrower into the exact position here where this ball is so i just basically make it a child object not off the box but off the ball itself just make it a child object and then i'm just going to zero out the positions and then i'm just going to then remove it no longer a child object just move this all the way out the way so then with the ball and the ball thrower so the idea here is to put the script on the box. So I'll go ahead and make the box completely see through here, just simply by making it transparent and also turn off the collider. So there we have it. Now you can do this differently. This is just the way I like to do it. So that later on, if I want to spawn more balls in, I can spawn more in and simply have these ones delete themselves. Or just have the same one reset which then you can just apply the script to the ball directly with some modifications of course so now if we do um, continue here we're gonna go ahead and create a script I'm gonna call this my ball thrower and I'm actually gonna place this on the ball thrower um, game objects. So let's go ahead and drag and drop it and then let's go right into the All right, pops up on my auto monitor. Let me move it over And here we are simple ball thrower script now. We're gonna need some variables. So let's go ahead and create them real quick I'm gonna show you exactly what we're gonna need um, And real quickly, let's go ahead and create them All right, so these are the variables I've created and these are the numbers that I've I've found to be a little bit more of what I'm looking for. But feel free to change this around if they're, you know, if, if you just want things to be different for yourself. So a couple of variables up top here, a few here, and a few down here. Go ahead and pause your video and copy all these uh, variables if you need to do, well, of course you need to do so. All right, now I won't be needing the other three, other two using system collections here so i'm going to remove those from the top now that we have our variables all set up let's start with the first thing here i'm actually going to remove this component this uh, function the start function so we can just focus from the top going down so i just have the start function for right now and we're going to start building on that and going down okay so first thing i'm going to need is i want to set up ball and this is just a function I'm going to call when the game start. I like to keep these separate, so I'll make the function here void setup ball, just like so. And now in this function, I'm going to declare what exactly ball is supposed to be. As you can see, I made it private. If you want to skip this part, you can then make it public, but follow along. Nevertheless, um, I just find that this works best for me. So. I'm going to say game object ball or say yeah sure underscore ball is what I'll call it game object ball is equal to game object right not get component <laughs> game object and then we're going to find a game object with a certain tag and I'll tag it player capital P in this case player so I'm making it in a way that we can always have different balls later on in the future. And then we're simply just going to take our ball variable and equal it to the ball underscore. So all you got to remember to do is go back into your scene and make sure that the ball, this ball here is tagged player. You can see it's a capital P. So now the script will automatically target that as your player. And if anytime you want to spawn in another one, that's okay. You can just call this function again to set up ball. After that, I'm going to go ahead and call a reset. Uh, let's say reset ball. And I'll go down the line and make that function as well. So reset, um, oops, reset ball, just like that. I don't need the private. 
So I'll go ahead and remove that. Now that we have the reset ball, inside the reset ball, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to be resetting a few variables, the throw, the holding, and um, you're going to see. We're going to basically make sure we set everything that are floats to zero, um, angles back to zero, and velocity to zero. So just watch. All right, so I've set everything back to zero and then also the throw and the holding to false, which are these two. So I went ahead angle back to, angle is a vector three, so vector three dot zero. Um, the start post and the end post is a vector twos. So I went ahead and set those back to zero. And then all the other uh, variables that are floats, I just went ahead and set them to zero when I reset the ball. Also, when I reset the ball, I should go into the ball component. So let's say get component, and it will have a rigid body on it. And we want to set that rigid body back to zero as well. So we can say rigid body dot, uh, let's say velocity, and we set it to a vector three dot zero. We reset the ball, we want everything to go back to zero. I do need to access the rigid body one more time because we want to then also set the use gravity to false. All right, and this will reset the ball. Instead of calling or accessing the rigid body twice using the get component, you can, however, just create a variable. So we can do a rigid body variable, call it RB, and then we will have to do this only once right here inside of the ball setup when we target the ball and target this we can simply say um, rb equal that All right or uh, we just use the newly assigned variable like that as well so then down here we just got to say rb and then rb here without the get component, without the get component. There we go, just like that. So going forward, anytime we want to access the ball, rigid body, remember just use RB. Now then, let's start with picking up the ball, actually be able to click on it and move it around the screen. When you press play, click on it and it follows the mouse. That's not too hard to do, not too difficult. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll create a new function, void, and we'll call this pick up ball. Inside here, we're gonna create a vector three and we'll call this mouse pulse because this will represent the mouse position. So input dot mouse position and this variable will represent that mouse position right there and then. So we wanna make some changes to the mouse position when the pickup ball function is running. First thing is mouse position dot Z should equal to camera dot main remember the mouse is, is two dimension on the screen up down left right so when you're trying to do something within a 3d world you need to go into the um the screen to world point but we're going to access first the near clip clip plane so that basically how close the ball gets to the screen and let's go ahead and i'm going to do something drastic like 30 so that you can see exactly what this does. Next, we're gonna do the new position, which is a variable that we have right here. You probably wonder what that is for. Just a temporary position that we use to place the ball at a certain spot near the, um, in the world um, that we use to, like what I just mentioned about the mouse being 2D, um, just place a, a spot in the world for that. And so then we'll say, camera dot main this is how you access that as i was saying it is screen to world point and then we're going to use the mouse position finally where it's time to move the ball we say ball dot transform but don't forget to use the local position and say equal vector three dot lerp we want a nice smooth 
smooth transition. So we're using lerp. Lerp simply needs the ball current position. So basically that is the same as ball transform dot local position right here. Then comma, the new position, right? Which calculates the mouse in the 3D three dimensional world. And then we will say here for movement, the speed basically, I like to go with 80 and then times time dot delta time. Okay, now this, when this is active, the mall should follow the mouse along the screen. We're gonna take a peek at that in just a moment. Let's go ahead now into the update function. Inside the update function, we're gonna simply do an if, and you can say if holden, which is a, um, which is basically a boolean that we've made right here. We have a throw and holding. So if holding, if we've picked up the ball and we're holding it, then what needs to happen? We need to do the pickup. So basically do this where the ball will follow the mouse. Again, I'm gonna show you exactly why this 30 is for and how 30 is a bit dramatic, but I'm gonna show you what it does. Now, just for a quick, quick little check here, if thrown, if we've thrown the ball, at this point, we shouldn't be able to carry on with the rest of the code because we shouldn't be able to affect the rest of the code that's coming up because the ball is already thrown, okay? So there's no need for us to affect that code. All right, let's quickly, let's quickly code the ability now to click and pick up the ball. Uh, we'll just use Raycast. We won't use the on mouse, um, on mouse down and on mouse out because I would use that if I was directly putting the script on the ball, but since I'm placing it on another object here, we'll use um, Raycast to detect that we've clicked the ball. I will show, if you guys request, I will leave another, you know, I will leave another link in the description with another script that you can just drag and drop on the ball itself, and you won't need this. All right, so anyways, return if we're throwing the ball, so we cannot like click on the ball again until it is reset. Okay, so if, right, we're gonna do a input and get mouse button down, and that would be mouse zero, which is our um, left click or primary click. You see if I click here, click there, click there, click there, that is the click. So when we click down, we can click anywhere on the screen, but we wanna make sure that where we're clicking is actually on the ball. So I'm gonna create a variable here for Ray. <coughs> Ray would simply be um, casting out from the camera into the world space. So again, screen point to ray, and from where the mouse input position, right? We're gonna also capture the, the ray cast hit. And let's just call that underscore hit. Done deal. Now then here's where we do the logics to test to see if we actually clicked on the mouse or on the ball. If the mouse clicks on the ball. So we do physics dot ray cast. And then we need to tell it where we tell it from where the ray is out to where that hit was. And this is infinite unless you put an option of how long um, the ball is going to be relative close to the camera. So I'm going to go maybe just 100 um, there in pixel. I believe it's pixel could be wrong, but 100 usually is pretty, uh, pretty good. Otherwise, we'll shoot a ray from where you're clicking which is infinite psh, all the way out or how many, however many you determine right here. So. If you want to create some sort of game where if it's too far you can't click it, then yes, you can use this um, number here, this value to decide that. All right, now we're shooting out that ray. Check to see if we hit. So if the underscore hit, you know, that means we hit something. We're gonna check the transform of that thing we hit. So hit dot transform and see if it is equal to the ball dot transform. Or we can also just do like tag or or layer, but eh, just do it like this, okay? Once that happens, we will start our start time variable, can't spell. <laughs> start time is gonna start. So we have a little timer here that starts to tick, 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 tick. There we go, start time. Um, we need a start position as well. Start position equals where the mouse is right now. So input dot mouse um, position. 
if you're wondering start position and, and um, start time these are the variables that we've had up here start time and uh, the start position which is start post which is um, a vector 3 so we need to know where we've started and if that's true then hold in equals true right and you can see here if old is true then we're picking up the ball which should be correct because we're clicking on the ball according to the rate cast with this amount of code let's do a quick test and see the results of what this number here does 30 f hit play head on back to unity game is playing there's no rigid ball rigid body on the ball my bad let's go ahead and add a rigid body and don't forget to uncheck the use gravity. If you don't uncheck the use gravity and you hit play, the ball will then fall. <laughs> um, but the reset, oh, I almost forgot. The reset is unchecked that for us. You can see right here. So that was actually pretty nice that we added that in. Anyways, click on a ball. And as I move it around, you can see how far it is all the way down there. All right? When you click, the ball sort of disappeared. And now it's following the mouse, but it's all the way down there in that world space. Remember, the mouse is 2D. The ball is all the way down there in that world space. Now, if you reduce that number, say five, hit save, head back into Unity. Right, the ball is right here. And then we can try to throw it. Now, when you release the click, the ball still follows the mouse. So, what we want to do is as soon as you release it, we want it to snap back into this position. So releasing the mouse requires us to check for the opposite of this. This is on mouse down, button zero. We need the on mouse up for that button zero. So you could do an else if here. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is the open for this and this is the closing for that condition. So we can attach a quick little else if. And we're going to check now for the input dot mouse up for mouse zero, like so, and create the body. I'm going to go down one line like so, just for cosmetics. Okay. So then, let's also do a end. There is an end time. The time is ended when we're done clicking. And then the end post, which is another variable that we made, is wherever the mouse is ended. In position this is all useful for calculating directions and the angles and all that stuff just keep watching till the end you'll see how this all comes together we're gonna also do a swipe distance which is a variable that's already made this will equal up to all we gotta do is the end position minus the start position all right and position minus start position and then we just do the magnitude. So now we're making our calculations based on start and end, start time and end time and our start position and end position when we first click the ball. Um, the swipe time now is another one we need. So swipe time will equal to, <laughs> not that, swipe time will equal to the end time divided by or minus the start time. So when you first clicked on it and when you release, that is your swipe time, which will help us with determine the speed of your flick. All right, well, we have released. Let's go ahead and check to see if the swipe, not distance, but the swipe time is less than a very small number here, which will let us know that you've done a nice little flick and the swipe distance you want to make sure that you've actually moved the mouse and in, in, into a, uh, a a minimum distance let's say it's more than let's say 30 so you've actually done a nice little swipe there at that point basically you are you have thrown the ball or you're trying to throw the ball so this is um, throw ball basically what we want to do here is we want to calculate your speed so I'm going to say calc um, speed, which is something we're going to do later. So I just commented out, calculate your speed, and we want to calculate your angle. 
we're going to make these two variables or these two functions soon. But let's continue. So at this point, we'll tell the ball rigid body, which remember that's RB. And we just tell it to add force in the direction of new vector um, 3. In this direction, the direction for the x will be calculated by our angle variable dot x. And we will times this by the ball speed. The direction of the y would obviously be the angle of the y and we will minus this by the ball speed. Sorry, so sorry. We're not going to minus this. We we'll times it as well by the ball speed. We're going to make some changes to it later. Now the z is going to be similar, the same. Um, let's do a parentheses here and put this and this into a parenthesis of itself, just like so. And then we'll do the same for these. Parentheses, like so. So hopefully that, that makes sense to you. And then in here, um, we'll do the same thing. So the Z will be angle dot Z. And then we're going to times this by ball speed. Just make sure you guys understand what we've written here. All this in a nice parenthesis. That is the x, all this, y, and z. Where is my open parenthesis? There you go. Just like that. So let me see here. Mm -hmm. New vector 3. Okay, everything looks good. Um, what am I missing? Open. Okay, we're missing one more closing parentheses here for that one. There we go. And that will do it. All right, so um, let me just pull a little space here so we can separate these, which one is which, just like so. And then we have like so. There you go. So it's just easier to look at. All right, that will add force to the ball. Next, the rigid body. Again, we need to tell it to use gravity. And we'll tell it that will be true now because we've, we want it to throw. Next, holding will become false because we've thrown it, no longer holding it. And then thrown, which is the other variable, is now true. So this variable here, thrown and holding, they are a key telling it when it's thrown and when it's um, holding. Now here's the thing, um, once this swipe happens, that means we have thrown it. But if we didn't, if we simply release it, we need an else. So I'll simply put a little else here, right? And all we're going to say in the else is this. One line we're going to put here is else, and I'm simply just going to tell it to do the reset ball. What does this do? It resets the ball if we didn't throw it. Let's go into Unity and check, show you what I mean. So if I click on the ball, it follows my mouse, right? As I'm click, and if I release the click, it should shoot back here and reset if I didn't throw it. So to make that happen, let me show you. We're going to do the reset ball if uh, and this is more than that. So um, the reset ball part should kick in if I didn't and I might have not saved there. Interesting. So that's what it is. This one. Okay. Reset ball. Right here, we'll do an invoke, and we'll say one more time as a string. Though you write the name of the function, so basically the name, this function name right here. Put reset ball right there, then a comma, and I'll put uh, I'll put four, f. 
This means it's going to reset the ball in four seconds after it is thrown. All right, everything is save, reset immediately when we don't throw, and reset when it's thrown. All right, let's give it a go. Everything is saved. We're going to go ahead and hit play. That follows me if I throw. Try to throw it, falls to the ground, and in four seconds. That's a long four seconds. Something wrong. Click on the ball. Use gravity did, yeah, use gravity did reset. So it did reset the ball. Um, in the reset, see reset ball? There's nothing that tells it to come back to that position. So that's the only thing we are <laughs> missing from our um, reset ball. So that is, <laughs> that is important <laughs> if we want it to come back and reset. So let's go ahead and do that. All we gotta do is somewhere here at the bottom, we'll then say ball dot um, transform dot position equal, and then just say transform then just say transform dot position because the script is going to be on this or it is on this it's going to reset back to that spot Let's hit save head back into unity and we're going to hit play so now when I move it release it snap back there move it release snap back there when I throw falls to the ground there is no like speed actually being applied four seconds later response perfect all right so these are all the mechanics needed to throw the ball. The only thing that's missing is calculating the speed and calculating the angle based on the throw. That's why we have the, um, where is it? The ball speed and velocity and angle. That's why we have these all as um, local variables. And they're not private. They're not created inside of the function itself. Okay. So now we can go out of the update down here and we'll create the void and we'll call this calculate speed or calc speed, which is this one right here. So let me uncheck these, uncomment these because these are what we're gonna make. Okay, this one doesn't exist. I'll right click and tell the Visual Studio to just go ahead and generate it. So I got my calculate angle and calculate speed. The way these works are actually pretty simple. Let's start with angle. This may be the difficult, the most difficult one to understand, but in angle, we're going to give it all the information it needs to calculate the right angle instead of this variable. Notice that that's being used for the direction, the, the X, the Y, the Z, and the ball speed. All of it is being used. Angle is very important. Now to get this angle, you must understand that the camera and the mouse um, the mouse on the camera is complete 2D as you're moving your mouse across the screen. So you got to be able to calculate that distance within, similar to how we did with this. If you remember what we did here, the clipping planes and the making the ball um, show up all the way down there when we click. Basically, same deal. So again, screen to world screen to world point and then we say new vector 3 inside here the end post dot y remember that end post is the end post is the the mouse let's see when we when we first click start post is the mouse end post is the mouse Start an end post, mouse, 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 mouse position. So, in here we're saying um, the X and then the end, um, end post now for the Y. We're done dragging. And then the Z, well, we're going to add now 50 to it. We got to create, I like 50. 50 gives me more of a, it's almost like if, if you look at this sideways. Um, where this line is the screen You're, the mouse moves like this on that screen the ball is in here in 3D world so we have to give it like an angle to say hey you're going that way or that way so we have to give it a point to look at within the three dimensional world once we have done that um, 
let's go ahead and create a open and close parentheses here and calculate the camera dot main and then the near clip plane one more time and add um, about five to that. That five is important. Um, don't really want to take up your time with lectures or much, but understand that the screen and the ball, you move the mouse right here, then the ball is going to use that as distance. But what about in, in the 3D world, it has to see it that way, not just in 2D. So if this is a screen and this is the ball from a sideway view, your mouse being like somewhere up here is going to equal to somewhere this way in like in the game itself in the 3d world so like that's that z position so this is giving it that z position and height as well okay anyways on we go this is important to give us that angle now for the speed calculating speed is pretty simple um, let's say ball velocity equals the swipe distance divided by, and we just put swipe distance minus swipe time, just like that. We want to make sure that it doesn't add speed to it when we're supposed to just be resetting. So only when we've done a nice quick flick, but I guess what, only when, only when we'll say if um, swipe time is more than zero. Make sure you don't get confused by that because this is checking if it's less than, but st it's still gonna be more than zero. It's just checking to see if it's a fast swipe. Well, if it's more than zero, at least you've swiped and it should then add speed um, it shouldn't just not do anything, okay? Um, now that we have this velocity thing, calculating speed by by swipe distance and time, um, we're simply just going to say ball speed will be equal to the ball velocity. And I find that just adding a little extra to it helps. So I'm going to say times, um, I do like a 40 or something. Just adding a little extra to it kind of help because this little swipe is a very small number. And then setting the max velocity, as you can see, there is a max variable for a max speed right here. I set it to 40. Um, I'm gonna turn that up though. So if uh, I just create a little function here, a little logic here to see if the speed is ever gonna be less than or equal to um, ball speed uh, I will, I'll actually say more than or equal to ball speed then you can say ball speed equals you know max speed or something just to check to see if you've gone over right we're adding a little 40 to it to kind of like beef it up if you've gone over that speed we're gonna um, set it to that speed. If you want to just make sure that anytime you throw it goes to this speed Just check if it's less than Right, so here we check if it's more than Then we set it to that speed. I'm going to do a little something here Right, and I'm gonna check to see if it's less than the max speed and if it is I'm gonna set it to um, I'm just gonna increase it so I'm just gonna say ball speed plus equal I say ball speed yeah plus equal uh, I give it an extra 40 that's all I'm doing there once we're done with that just go ahead and reset the swipe time equals zero and we're done I'll leave a link in the description where you can just copy paste it but hopefully you understand what's going on here. Now for a quick test and some changes that we're gonna make. So don't go just yet. Uh, we're gonna make some more changes. There's more changes to be made to make it um, react better right here. But this is the, the base of it, the logic 
All right, so um, we're gonna hit play, and I'll show you. Click, move, move, move. Okay, it resets if I don't throw. Then when I throw, boom, it goes. Okay, after four seconds, reset. It keeps spinning, which I like. That's fine. Throw with a nice little flick. It throws. Now it's not going as much as it should, so I find that there's small little tweaks that you can do to it right here to make it work even better. Um, and again, I will leave another script in the um, description where you can just use a direct script, put on the ball, um, completely up to you. But uh, this one is on the ball thrower and not this. So anyways, here, what we can do right here to fix this is let's make some changes. Think logically when you're throwing a ball. It does have some height, but moreover, it has forward speed, All right? So as for the height, which is this, it's the height. We want that to be about half, and then this can be um, maybe doubled. So first thing is I said the max speed, I'm gonna turn that up. So I'll put that maybe 200 instead of 40. And now you see the ball does go, right? And if I try to throw it, it goes pretty far. You know what? Let's uh, let's actually let's actually do this. Um, let's do this. There. Anytime we're less than the max speed, it just goes to the max speed. Simple as that. All right? You can see what 200 looks like. Okay, so you see, <laughs> I took it out, but a lot more height than I want. So this isn't like a Pokemon Go, but if you want it, then that's good for you. So what I'm gonna do is cut that height in half by simply do a divide two. Then as for the speed here, I'm just going to take that speed and do times um, two. In fact, I'm going to divide the height by three. So it's taking that same speed, that same high number, but just reducing the, the height value of it. Okay, so one more time. Reduce this by three, but then this one, just multiply it by two. I'll leave the code in the description for you anyways. Let's go ahead and hit play. You can see what this looks like. It's like so. So now it's not as high. I still I can still throw a high one if I wanted to, but more if that speed is being applied to the forward than it's been applied than it is to the height. Now if you say, oh, I still wanted a little bit more height, then you divide it by two instead. And now a lot more of your speed would be applied to the height. Um, you're still getting the same amount of speed applied to your forward, but just more now is being applied to the height. And that is it for this video. Here is a complete look at the code after I've made my modifications. This is the preferred way that I find it works best. So these are numbers that I'm using. Feel free, now that you understand how things work, to make those changes and modify what you would like to modify. And as I had mentioned before, you will be able to simply take a script that I will leave in the description if you want to use a simple script here where you can just drag and drop it on the ball. So I'll have that included. Just drag it, drop it on the ball, and then hit play. And you have things working right off the bat, just like that as well. Um, there are the pros and cons to each method, so just pick the one that works best for you. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.